Some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. With David and Jonathan is the world cross-country and half-marathon champion who's famous for insisting that all of her teammates are free of drugs. Earlier tonight, she even ripped off David's HRT patches. <laughs> Paul Radcliffe. <laughs> With Gary and Rory as a comedian who made his name on Jonathan Ross's Big Big Talent Show, but who says he didn't enjoy the experience. Apparently, it was almost impossible to make himself heard over Jonathan's suit. <laughs> ben Norris. It's handbags time now, all about Barneys between sports stars, Gary, Rory and Ben. It's our very own Paula Radcliffe for you. In this summer's World Championships, there was heartbreak for Paula as she finished just outside the medals again. Tulu and Adera, they're side by side, they're neck and neck, they're inseparable. It's Tulu, Adera, Wami, Radcliffe. Oh my word, how many more agonies do we have to go through with Paula? As if that wasn't bad enough, Paula's coach and indeed husband, Gary Locke, sensitively chose that very moment to start a domestic. <laughs> so what was the argument all about? Can I just say a big thank you to the studio audience for making it here today, because today, if you've read all those um, newspaper articles and uh, emails and all this stuff on the internet, today is the day that you really shouldn't come in to London. <laughs> because you do risk, as a, a very, very clear risk, of being exposed to a juvenile under-rehearsed sports quiz. <laughs> It's quite a weird turnaround though, isn't it? All these media types being told that if they find white powder in their office to not inhale it. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie, you're very, yeah. very famously anti-drugs, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, do you get tested on a regular basis? You do. You can get tested at any time. Someone just come and knock on the door and you have to go and either do a urine test or a blood test. Wow. But David, David here isn't actually a work. professional sportsman anymore. Um, sure but he, he regularly gives urine samples, don't you, David? <laughs> Often during it's the show, no, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> he just forgets where he is sometimes. He's, his age. He's the only man I know whose trouser side is measured in gallons. <laughs> But Gary had a bit of a scare, didn't you? About um, Gary thought that Michelle, his wife, was um, a drug dealer. Remember that? He was, late go he, was late <laughs> he was late going to work one morning and the phone rang, he answered it. And a male voice said, Is that dope gone yet? <laughs> I was wondering, the, the row, it, it, perhaps it, it is, your, is your Gary a bit of an unreconstructed male? Had he come home from the pub, found no tea on the table, <laughs> and she's out running again, come down the track, go, I'll tell you what you can do, run home and knock us up a sandwich, love. <laughs> How many married couples can say this on their wedding night, as me and my wife did? Here we have two people, two virgins, never who are saving their first sexual experience for this night to entertain me and my wife in our hotel. <laughs> After Bergerac, before match of the day. <laughs> Was he just saying, what are you doing going on that laddish quiz show <laughs> with that overdressed puff, <laughs> the fat lech, the geriatric cricketer and that rather good-looking footballer? Are you a Don't footballer, Mick? Yeah, I used to play a bit of football, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wondered why he'd left out the phrase, yeah. jugged. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. But after you've had a row like that in public, do you have, like, you know, really good makeup sex? You would have done if I'd let him back in the room, wouldn't Makeup, makeup sex. <laughs> Inserting lipstick. No, no. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> hey, now you mention it, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a sight bigger anyway, Jonathan. <laughs> Can I just say on a personal note how exciting it is for someone like me, the new boy, to be here tonight, you know, mm. on this it's with, you know, you know, the thing is, but, you know, I'm sitting next to Gary Lineker yeah. and opposite that cricket bloke, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's quite exciting. And also, a a big fan. I got you an apple. Did you? Because you used to be a teacher, didn't I did you? used to be a teacher. <laughs> That's the first uh, gift I've had off anyone on the show, apart from Jonathan. And I oh. had to drink orange juice for two weeks after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant well. <laughs> Gary's team. I think it was, um, he was complaining that um, Paula got a tactics wrong, that, that she went too soon. Went too late, not you too late. Sure, oh, right, okay. you sure too, too late. late. Yeah. So That's what, thanks for the help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for that, well done. <laughs>
Hilda Hill is famous for her finishing kick. It's usually aimed at her husband's knackers. <laughs> Paula suffers from a severe iron deficiency and at those world championships an equally severe deficiency in gold, silver and bronze. <laughs> still, still there are compensations. She's an expert on the Kenyan and Ethiopian national flags. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Paula, your squabble involves England striker Robbie Fowler. Here he is, scoring against Albania. Fowler. Still Fowler! Yes! Delightful. And former England defender Phil Thompson. Here he is scoring against Italy in 1976. Good deep one. Phil Thompson got up. He got up beyond two of them and he scored. So why are they now at loggerheads, David's team? Well, doesn't um, Robbie Fowler wear those sort of silly little things you get on your nose to try and open your airways up? There's nothing wrong with those. Fowler you wear make a fortune out of me. Do you wear, you wear one, don't yeah. you? Because I thought, because yeah, I know Robbie, Fowler's but, been... But Robbie Fowler's got a naturally big enough nose anyway. <laughs> as, for instance, as Phil Thompson, so I mean... Mm. Yeah, their nose In fact, Gary, have you thought about this? If you had a nose that big, wouldn't it just balance out your face rather well? <laughs> if he had a nose Pearls. that big, he'd just have to grow the moustache and it'd look like he's wearing one of those things you get from joke shops. <laughs> what does your husband think of the plaster on the nose thing, then? Does he, does, he, does he ever ask you to put it on for, like, special sessions? <laughs> He tries to get it off as fast as possible. I bet he does. Brushes it with the other <laughs> and rips it off and takes half my nose with it. Is he ever done your bikini line while he's there? <laughs> Why would you wear a nose strip on your bikini line? So you could breathe through it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, breathing Sorry. when you're down there is often a problem for us. <laughs> Why do you think those ears are like that? <laughs> <laughs> but Fowler and Thompson, let's be honest. They have got large noses, haven't they? I suspect that even Daniela Westbrook's at home laughing at those two. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, didn't Fowler do... We had a question before with him on the show. Didn't he do that um, pretend cocaine celebration where when he scored he a goal, he went down and he did the line like that? Yeah. Apparently after that, Liverpool thought about selling him. They weren't sure about his value as a player, but on the street, he was worth 15 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you know what happens on the street. <laughs> What street is that? The Mall? <laughs> <laughs> you're very anti-drugs, aren't you? While we're talking about drugs, you're very, I guess it must be tough for you. I suppose you have to watch what you eat and drink, and just in case... Because even in normal substances, you find drugs, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I had a cup of tea at Barry Moore's house. That made me feel completely <laughs> different. <laughs> it's the way he got off. We can joke about it now. <laughs> Was this not a training ground incident? It may well have been. And didn't Fowler sort of... Um, kick the ball towards that huge proboscis of Phil Thompson. Yes, that's exactly that what happened. I'll give you three points for yeah. that. Well done. <laughs> it all dates back to a training session at Liverpool when Phil Thompson was fixing the nets while Fowler was practising his shooting. When Thompson was almost hit by the ball, he accused Fowler of doing it deliberately and apparently suggested it was about time Fowler left the club. At one point in the row, Fowler and Thompson squared up nose to nose. Fortunately, they were still too far apart to be able to hit each other. <laughs> and seriously, from all of us here, they think it's all over. The very best wishes to Gerard Houllier. We wish you a speedy recovery. And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. We move on to Sporting Bluff, Gary's team. It's those West London underachievers, Queen's Park Rangers for you. Here's Andy Thompson scoring the winner against Port Vale last month. Now, QPR have recently been the subject of a takeover bid. So who wanted to become their new owners? David's team. QPR were the subject of a takeover by rail track. <laughs> QPR were the subject of a takeover by mates condoms. QPR were the subject of a takeover by the Moonies. I've always thought mates was just a terrible name for condoms. Because yeah. you'd be there going, darling, I'm going to make love to you with my mate's condom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what let's have you... sex, I'm just going to get my mates. That's it. <laughs> it's terrible when a condom splits, though, isn't it? Isn't it, Paula? What? <laughs> she was chatting to me earlier. But you know, <laughs> it's also sometimes it's a good thing. Because if it wasn't for a condom splitting some 45 years ago, when a buxom Cornish wench gave up her favours to a travelling GI in return for a banana and a pair of used tights, then Rory would not be sitting there. <laughs> in Cornwall, in Cornwall, they use a sheep's bladder, and sometimes they leave it in the sheep. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Was the other one real track? 
The Moonies, I think, was the other one. Do you think if it was the Moonies, <laughs> it was a go over QPR, they'd have to have little windows in the back of their shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm winning them over. <laughs> Gary, you're a member of a cult, aren't you? Well, you've, rather, you've started your own cult, and I want to warn you about Gary's cult, ladies and gentlemen. It starts quite simply and innocently. He invites you over, maybe for a meeting, or in my case, a barbecue. <laughs> have you met Mr and Mrs Barry Davis? Shall we all go upstairs? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're being ridden like a mule by Ray Stubbs. <laughs> and believe me, he does. <laughs> I think it must be the movies. OK, so oh, you right, think right. Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes. Well Good job. So, Jonathan had it straight for once. QPR have had extensive discussions with the Moonies about buying the club. There is now a theory that the deal to buy QPR could fall through. The Reverend Sun Myung Moon said, We may be mad, but we're not that bloody mad. <laughs> David's team, you'll remember the recent final of the BBC Greyhound Trophy at Hall Green, won by Thornfield Pride. And they are away. Thornfield Pride coming through. Thornfield Pride. Albany Rose in the blue jacket. Albany Rose, Thornfield Pride, and it was absolutely close at the final. <laughs> now, Irish Greyhound Racing has been devastated by a recent scandal, and the authorities have had to step in. But what action have they taken, Gary's team? The Irish Greyhound authorities have banned dogs from doing adverts. The Irish Greyhound authorities have banned dogs from drinking Guinness. The Irish Greyhound authorities have banned dogs from taking Viagra. I don't know, but shouldn't the one in fourth have had someone jumping onto the track and telling them they did it all wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That's never really healed up for you, has it? <laughs> you, you had a terrible injury before the last Olympics, didn't you? You, you hurt your knee. Yes, I mean. so I did. What, what happened there? How did that happen? I was kneeling on the floor writing um, the thank you letters for the wedding presents and I got a blister under my kneecap standing up. But I heard you hurt your head as well, because someone told me that while you were kneeling, a car backfired and instinctively you ran forward at top speed, smashing your head in the sidewalk. Sadly, being beaten to victory by your Ethiopian flatmate. <laughs> if you gave the dogs Guinness, would you have to leave them there to stand for ten minutes at the starting line? <laughs> then just top them up and draw a shamrock on their head before they raced? <laughs> the oh, I wish Guinness. I was in Kabul. <laughs> So do we. I know. <laughs> what could dogs advertise, do you think? Well, it's the Andrex well, puppy. They advertise Andrex, don't they? But that's like a little Labrador puppy, isn't it? But they could use a greyhound if you were in an urgent situation and you really had to go quick. <laughs> <laughs> there are no adverts left to do. Gary and Nick have got them all. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> What's a money lending one you do? Um, I can't remember the name of it. Are you skin? Have you f***ed up your life? Yeah. I haven't. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically the drift of it, yeah. <laughs> what about Viagra then? Let's roll up our sleeves and get into the Viagra possibility of dogs on Viagra. They might not catch the hair, but by God they'd shag it. What? <laughs> 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 not if they didn't catch it. <laughs> they might not catch it immediately, but by God they'd shag it when they got there. Actually, when I just do, when I go... <laughs> Some of us are still in a slightly different time zone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> David, have you ever tried Viagra? No, not, not knowingly. Not knowingly, you see, because I have it on reliable authority that, um, you know that Horlicks you drink before bedtime? <laughs> have you noticed recently it has a slightly tangy aftertaste? <laughs> Your wife is slipping you the old Viagra at bedtime. Blue Horlicks. Now, I've told her in advance, you might as well try and bring back Lloyd George from the dead. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> but she's informed me it's not for the sex. She just wants to make sure you stop rolling out of bed at night. That's all <laughs> She's worried you'll hurt yourself. I I think on a camping holiday. I I told one. <laughs> if they had Viagra, they okay. could not only run the race, they could plough the track at the same time. <laughs> Have a little blood run after them, planting flowers. <laughs> It would be the Linford Christie of Greyhound racing, wouldn't they? It would, wouldn't they? If you... Linford took that, Steve Backley might pick him up and throw him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you check out the male athletes then when you're stretching and limbering up yourself? Um, some of them, yeah. Because let's face it, really, you know, your line of work, which is marvellous, but really, we're more interested in checking you out in your skimpy pants. <laughs> Not me, I have it's an interest in athletics. What are you doing under your desk, Nick? Get your hand where we can see. I've <laughs> got a lady on the show. I'm doing exactly what you're doing above the desk, mate. <laughs> Can we have an arch, Shuffy? What do you think? Viagra. Is it not the Viagra because the testosterone? Viagra. Okay, well, you think therefore that Rory was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. Yes. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.
Yes, Rory was unusually telling the truth. The Irish Greyhound authorities recently added Viagra to the list of banned substances after trainers were caught doling out pills to their dogs. Its chief, John Garrahy, confirmed the reason, saying brilliantly, Viagra might give racing dogs an extra yard. <laughs> The authorities only became suspicious when they went to a pub after a race meeting and found two of the greyhounds playing snooker without cues. <laughs> Traditionally, the way to make greyhounds go faster is to massage mustard into their testicles. Well, if Jensen Button is watching, it's got to be worth a try, mate. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It's what's going on now, in which we ask our teams to identify some frankly ludicrous sports. Gary's team, here's yours. I think this is how difficult blokes imagine ironing actually is. <laughs> <laughs> you do like your own ironing. No, Gary. no, but David definitely does. It's the only Jim, chance Jim. he gets to spend any time at the crease. Yeah. 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 Sport and ironing don't normally go together. Well, I suppose it's that bloke who irons Sue Barker's face, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> so this is presumably... Um, ironing. One of those things you yeah. see on late night on Men and Motors, isn't it? Mm. Extreme sports, is it? Mm. Extreme, of... extreme ironing. I'll give you three points for that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was the sport of extreme ironing, which according to its official website combines the excitement and danger of an extreme sport with the satisfaction of a well-pressed shirt. <laughs> there are now plans for a World Ironing Cup. England are among the favourites after a superb last-minute 35-yard bed cover was ironed by David Beckham. <laughs> the current World Extreme Ironing champ is Phil Steam Shaw, who says he'd like to iron one of Jonathan's frilly shirts. Well, that's fine, Phil, on one proviso, that Jonathan's wearing it at the time. <laughs> David's team, this is for you. <laughs> Has someone just tried to sell him a house in Stoke? <laughs> You're out of line. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I mistakenly made similar kind of remarks after reading in a newspaper report that Stoke was considered the worst place to live in Britain. And believe me, the Stokies have wasted no time in making their strong opinions be felt by me. So I, I actually did pop up undercover and visit Stoke. Mm -hmm. And may I say how delighted I was by the place. What a wonderful place to visit it really is. You want to put that apple down there? No, no. Are you going to... <laughs> Thanks for this. Really, seriously, I recommend if you want to go and see an example of how people used to live 50 years ago, there's no fine working museum in the country. Were they watching Jonathan take delivery of his wardrobe? <laughs> 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 I think this yeah. is a Melda Marcos getting her shoes back. <laughs> <laughs> he looks to me like a laughing... Is that extreme Pissed. laughing sport? <laughs> that you see late at night on Men and Motors. So I'll give you three Thank points you. for that, yeah. Those were highlights from the World Laughing Championships held in Thailand. We saw the loudest laugh section won by Bangkok's very own Kawachat Thong Chur. As you could see in that clip, the contest is held at Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Pattaya, which contains the weirdest and oddest artefacts in Thailand. Pride of place goes to the ping pong ball, which has actually been used for ping pong. <laughs> will now feature at the next Olympics when the British relay team attempt to hand the button to each other. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. <laughs> Time for our regulars to swan about in the dark as we play field the sportsman Gary and Rory. You're up first this week. If you'd like to take positions, put your blindfolds on. You'll have 90 seconds to work out who you're feeling. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen. Paul, I just, you never heard that before, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Just last week, actually. Yes, thank you, Paul. Well done.
Okay, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> you should know Gary doesn't like anything near his head. <laughs> Your time starts now. <laughs> there is nothing here. There is something. Hello. <laughs> Where is it? I don't know. I've got something long. And I've got nothing. Thin and... <laughs> you big ponce. Gary, is your ear piercer? <laughs> this. <laughs> it's, it's Jeffrey Archie. Oh. <laughs> what, what's going on? It's like. It's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's posh spice. <laughs> Is it, I think is it one of those things Gower used to have on the bonnet of his car? <laughs> this is, are we talking, um, oops, <laughs> oops, beg your pardon, <laughs> uh, Is it a, what's it called, a thingy, Archer? Yes, uh, it's Simon Needham, our top Archer, well done. Oh, right. well, is that all we needed? <laughs> An Archer. <laughs> Not very difficult, really. David and Jonathan. Go on, David. To your places, please. <laughs> I'll have you know, this is the very latest in Paris fashion. <laughs> it's a skirt and trousers, it's the Scousers. <laughs> he was this far from getting the part in Bally Kiss Angel. <laughs> Line falls on, please. Actually, this finishes the outfit off nicely. It does. <laughs> It's, this is what it needed. It's, it's much the best way of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> okay. And your time starts now. You, my dear. I know he's got a big yeah. nose, whoever it is. <laughs> is it Wobby Fowler? Is this the centrepiece at Michael Barrymore's welcome home party? <laughs> nice surprise. <laughs> Have you finally caught a puncture with one of your homemade traps, David? <laughs> oh, jeez. Has the valet fallen through the skylight again? <laughs> this is what happened when they, then, <clears throat> when they asked Princess Margaret to launch a new <clears throat> ship. She kept the bottle and used the bloke <clears throat> instead. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how the Red Devils prepare for kit inspection? <laughs> it's an ironing fellow, isn't it? We saw him earlier, didn't we? Yeah. It's the, um, so it's not very hot, you know. The uh, Extreme Sport it's World Ironing Champion... Iron. Name? Phil something? Yeah. Phil, um, Phil, Phil the Sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we care about a bloody iron? It God was say. Phil Stanley. <laughs> Uh, I'll be careful. Don't that. That. He's got the iron. He actually was an iron, you'll know it. <laughs> are you positive, are you? Steve, Steve. Steve. Sure. Sure. Well done. I'll give you ah, that. Right. Very good. Oh, uh, thank you, Phil. Oh, that's cool. Most impressive. Sir. This, this is why I had to go. Good enough. We're going to leave him there for us to show. Oh, yeah. And so the scores at the end of that round are David's team with 12 points and Gary's team with 12 points. We wind up the show by playing the name game. Now, this week, all the clues must be given in the form of impressions. The team in front goes first, which is neither team. So, alphabetically, David's team, can you pass those on to Jonathan, please? As you know, David, impressions are my very strongest point. <laughs> One voice fits all, you told us last OK, week. your time starts now. I am just a little man, but I can ride on the horse like a demon. Whoopsie-daisy. Thank you. Look well at that. German rider. <laughs> Hello, I'm a hero. 
I'm very good at free kicks. David and I've got a higher voice than my wife. Yeah, there you go. Now you have got to start listening to me, and if you don't, <laughs> I'm going husband. to whip that bloody thing off your nose. <laughs> I know this one. When I was first playing cricket, Queen, <laughs> Queen Victoria said to me, why don't you hit the bloody ball? Stop wafting, young jackanip. So is that the WG Grace on me, then? It's obviously you. Do you know your own name, David? Sorry? No. No, OK. <laughs> Heads. That's what I was saying. Bollocks, yeah. <laughs> Here's a good one. Woo! Oh! Woo! Woo! Smooth criminal! Woo! 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 A bitch smooth criminal! Come on! Michael Jackson. There you go, Michael Jackson. She said it. Thanks for Preston, apparently. <laughs> Um, tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny little footballer, no bigger than a man or lady's thumb. Dennis Wise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good impression. Tennis player. That's an impression. Absolutely no bloody good, but very posh. You'd like Impressions, him. Impressions! Impressions! <laughs> I forgot, I forgot. OK, all right. Tennis player, I'm very posh. Not very good. Oh. That's all right. That's an impression. <laughs> OK, eight will win it for you. Pass those along to Rory, please. Come on. Come on, Mr. Your time starts. Woo. Now. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Pete Sanders. <laughs> Hello, darling, it's me. I, I'm, I can't come home tonight. I'm shagging late in the... I mean, I'm working late in the... I'm recording. Meow. 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 A dog. Chewbacca. A dog. Yeah, very good. Mm, Nick the Miller. Very good. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a twat from Sheffield and I'm not... <laughs> I'm Melda Marcos. Correct. <laughs> well, you're very close. I'll give you that. Yes, the Melda Marcos one. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a footballer. I'm very old, and I hate Gunners and I hate Arsenal. And I play for Manchester United and I play for Spurs, and I, I really get on people, Teddy there, especially me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Wilson. <laughs> Nearly. Mm, that Anna Kornikova looks pretty damn sexy. Martina Navarro. Keep like going, keep going. You're on the right line. Lindsay Davenport. Lindsay Davenport. <laughs> what I would have done if I'd been managing this team, uh, back stick, early doors, in the onion bag. Oh, rattle me jewellery. Ron Atkins. Yeah, very good. <laughs> I'm too busy combing my moustache and combing my ponytail to get down to that David Seaman. <laughs> uh, I chop down trees. <laughs> <laughs> So, at the end of all that, David's team have 19, but this week's winner is Gary's team of 21. You know, it's going to be over now because Paula's husband's going to run on and give her a bucket, you know. <laughs> so, our thanks to David, Jonathan and Paula, Gary, Rory and Ben. We're all off to persuade the world ironing champion to do us a shirt for the morning. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Jazz great George Melly confines his pen hates to room 101 over on BBC Two shortly. And here on BBC One, after the news, more dodgy adverts in Joe Brand's commercial breakdown.